Welcome back. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a TV and film podcast. We're talking about all kinds of different properties. Sometimes the patrons of our show over at patreon.com slash streaming things get to mandate that we watch certain movies. And this time it's Dark Harvest chosen by Bluff Plum. Bluff Plum, one of our beloved Discord members. She's always in there. Not to imply that they've got nothing better going on. Just that they're very supportive. Yeah, correct. Very supportive. Always fun to talk to. Yeah. (laughs) They're always in there. They're always in there. Just like, geez. I can't out of there. (laughs) We locked her in there to try to starve her so that when Saw Through Jack comes out, she's Mm. in a frenzy to kill. Stuffed her with candy. (laughs) Uh, Now, it's interesting because Dark Harvest was a movie that came out just last year. And I saw 156 new movies last year. Like, 2023 releases. Mm -hmm. I saw 156. I think that's impressive. That is. What's even more impressive is this is a movie I wasn't even aware of somehow, (laughs) even amidst all of that. It was directed by David Slade. I'm a huge fan of 30 Days of Night. Uh, Pretty big fan of Twilight Saga Eclipse, both of which he directed. Uh, and oh, ho- I didn't I didn't pick up that he directed on that one. <laughs> yeah. And Hard Candy. You remember that movie? I do remember Hard Candy. I, hard to forget Hard Candy. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, maybe directorial debut or thereabouts. He also directed Black Mirror Bandersnatch, which we were just talking about when Andy was here. Benedict Bandersnatch? Benedict Bandersnatch. Uh, but yeah, was unaware. Of, oh, he did a lot of work on the Hannibal TV show. Good show. Good show. Uh, and Breaking Bad. Good show. Good show. Wow, David Slade. Uh, So, yeah, that's Slade. uh, Yeah, Slay Slade. That's Dark Harvest. It's a horror film that came out last year that was completely off of my radar. I had never seen it before, so I watched it for the first time. This was your first watch as well, right, Steve? It was, yeah, absolutely. So pretty soon, we'll reveal our overall thoughts and then do our best to recap and review the movie scene by scene. But uh, we actually got some Dark Harvest-related packages. Did we we not? We did. We 100% did. Uh, How do you want to do this? So there's two packages uh, do you want me to hand you one? And while you open it, do you want me to read why Bluff Pump chose sure. uh, this film? Dark Is Harvest? there any mention of the packages and the reasoning? Uh, you didn't pre-read it, did you? I, I did, but I forgot what she wrote. That's okay. Uh, I don't I, think so. I like a good mystery package. Okay, here, let me let me give you the first one. Give it to me, baby. It's a little heavy. Oh, look, at the, it's the photo over there in the aura is Casey in the studio. Whoa. Whoa. World's colliding. <laughs> All right, so... Bluff Pump went on to patreon.com slash streaming things and signed up at the appropriate tier to uh, mandate that we pick Dark Harvest. I asked her why she chose Dark Harvest, a, f- a film that I don't think is super well known. And they wrote, happy halfway to Halloween. That was a couple days ago, actually. If this movie wasn't going to be reviewed in October, six months from October 1st is the next best thing. (laughs) So it goes without saying that one of the reasons I chose this movie is because of my love for Halloween and October here, we'll pause. What do you got in there? Dude, there's so much popcorn. There's a ton of... Oh, what, what, kind, what kind of popcorn we got? And also... Act 2 popcorn. A giant bag of my favorite Holy candy. Holy shit. Albanese gummy bears? Oh my God. Those things are so good. And then my wife loves uh, peach rings. Peach. So I wonder if she would love Sour Patch Peach. Peaches, peaches, Very peaches, exciting. peaches, peaches. And then a giant thing of uh, sour, uh, Sawtooth Jack Intestines. <laughs> the strawberry laces. Fun fact about me. That's not so fun, I guess. I love Twizzlers. Yeah. I fucking hate red vines. So I don't really? know what these are going to do. But uh, Mr. Pibb and red vines equals crazy delicious. <laughs> I guess so. Do you remember that? No. That's from the Chronicles of Narnia rap. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pibb and red vines equals crazy delicious. <laughs> But it's interesting. Aren't red vines and Twizzlers the same thing? I could be sacrilegious right now, but I, I don't think so. No. Because I don't know if I've like actually eaten red vines, but I just assumed they were just Twizzlers. They taste slightly different. Not a fan. Well, that's all. Dude, we're going to get into this Albanese, I think, at some point, because I fucking love those. And yes. Sour Patch Peaches. Yum. That's a large bag of M's, yum. too. Well, Bluff Pump continues. She was saying that she loves Halloween in October. This movie has some strong vintage scary season vibes. Halloween and 60s rock have long been a happy couple, and this movie is dripping with their romance. It harkens back to the creature features of the silver screen. It's Grease meets It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown meets The Hunger Games. And did I mention the lore? We love lore. It's way better than data. I added that part. Sawtooth Jack deserves to be held in the same esteem as other seasonal baddies. I also love all of the references to the references to the misfits. 
the pioneers of horror punk. But most of all, I chose this movie because it was a victim of the pandemic. Its release date kept getting pushed again and again until late October 2023. It came to the Alamo Draft House theaters for one night only and then quietly went to streaming. It may not be high art, but it deserves so much more love and fanfare than what it got. So I chose to help people know about it. And I hope the fiends add it to their spooky season film rotation. I hope you enjoy it, or at the very least, I hope it made you nostalgic for autumn. Oh, and also, Daniel Faraday from Lost is here? Happy streaming. So uh, as a as a losty, a lost away, I also geeked out when I saw that uh, Daniel Faraday, played by uh, Jeremy Davies, uh, was in this movie. That's a character kit that you didn't get in far enough into Lost to know. I, he's, he, I think he's introduced in season four, but he's like a really good character. And Jeremy Davies is a good character actor. He's the dad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that was fun to see him. But thank you, Bluff Pump, for suggesting this movie. Uh, let's open the last. I'll open the last box. What's in the box? Uh, what's in the box? I hope it's more Albanese. <laughs> it's just another box of Albanese. Okay, here we go. What if in the movie seven it ended with him pulling out gummy bears? <laughs> that would have been so nice. Like, what's in the box? Oh, it's gummy bears. Just a bunch of paper. Oh, look what we got here. Oh my god. It's the the misfit mask. The what's the what's this character called? The crimson ghost or something? Something. Yeah, we got two of these. Okay. Should we do the whole podcast with these on? <laughs> I don't want to scare anybody. I don't. Oh, here let, we got to put it on a little bit. Do I have scissors? Scissor me timbers. Scissors. Ooh, the, the eye holes are so tiny. Yeah, it's it's really hard to see in this. Yeah, I would definitely not do battle. <laughs> How did they chase Saw Two Jack in these things? That's why they couldn't find him. Uh, obviously. Well, I feel. Spooky. Thank you, Bluff Plum. Thank you, Bluff Plum. I love all these are awesome. I, I think the mask is like completely obscuring our voices from reading on the mics. Welcome <laughs> but back. The, da, but da, these, da, 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 da. these are fun. These are cool. These are awesome. Thank you so much, Bluff Plum, and especially for like all the candy and being a supporter and suggesting that we watch this movie. Because yeah. Never seen this movie before either. So it was it was kind of a actually it was one of those things when um, it, it doesn't happen often, but sometimes when patrons suggest a movie for us to watch, I'll have never even heard of it before. Mm -hmm. And this definitely was like the one other of those sister, movies. like the other sister had never heard of it. Yeah, that worked out great. <laughs> Will Dark Harvest work out as well as the <laughs> my the well, I was sister? worried for you because I know you don't. This is a hot, I don't want to admit this, I don't want to out you, but most of the longtime listeners know you don't really like horror movies that mm -hmm. much. Correct. So I was a little worried for you, but it looks like you liked it more than I did, which was a shocker for me. Yeah. Uh, so what was it like watching Dark Harvest? Uh, so yeah, popped it on. And actually, when I sat down to start watching this, I had an epiphany where I actually had the ending of this movie spoiled for me some years ago. Because somebody was telling me about the book, because this is based off a book that oh. came out, I think in 2006, 2006 or 2008, it's one of those. And they, so they had told me the ending to the story. So when I started, you know, booting up the movie and kind of looking at what it was, I'm like, oh, I think this is based off that book that person was telling me. Cause so I had, I knew what the, the, the twist, if, if there's, if you can call it that, I knew what it was going in, which is kind of unfortunate. But at the same time, I was kind of, not super looking forward to this movie once I figured out what it was. Cause again, like you said, I'm not a huge horror movie fan. It's just not my genre. But as I sat down to watch it, I found myself having a lot more fun with it than I thought, especially the first half of the movie. Cause if I do like horror movie, I usually like a Stephen King. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's very, it's Kingy. Yeah. Like a Stephen King, it style thing. And, um, I like it when horror movies like take place in a time that's not modern times because often I just kind of think the characters are like really shallow and dumb M mean like slasher type movies, not like mm. your, um, your Ari Aster's or, uh, those type of movies like the witch. Like I'm not thinking of those. I'm thinking of like slasher type movies, mm -hmm. your, your, your schlocky horror films. Um, so when, when horror films typically take place in another time setting, like the fifties or sixties, I can like them a little bit more. Cause that also adds a little bit more of an interesting visual flavor to them. And I do think this movie works best when it's like, I love how, I love the lore of it. I love how there's this really weird, goofy lore about this town 
that's sort of separated from the rest of society. They're a, they're a farming group. And there's this weird, like, well, every year, this little sawtooth Jack guy comes out from the cornfields and the, we get all the high school seniors to go and try to kill him. And it's always on Halloween before he gets to the church. And it makes so sense. And it, it, I think there is a sense of fun because Halloween is fun. We all love Halloween. So I, I always like it when horror films kind of take the day of Halloween and try to make the horror film around the day. And I thought this was kind of a fun way to like, Oh, every Halloween is, you know, yeah, the kids get candy, but only if they kill the monster and rip it <laughs> apart. Uh, Cause Sausage Jack, Jack has a bunch of candy inside of him. So I love that. I love the idea of, Oh, there's this town. There's not, there's not a lot, or there's something more to this town. It just makes it feel elevated and like it's it's not realistic at all, but I kind of like that about it. It, 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 it. It's much more fairy tale and folklore and fun. Uh, plus, you got greasers and they're like, oh, we're going to switch blade you and stuff like that. Like, that's always soak them, soak them. Uh, that's always a good time. I do think the movie kind of falls apart halfway through and there's a lot of stumbles. I think there's a lot of story choices made purely because they want to get some more kills in. Like there's a big part of the movie, we'll get to it in the breakdown, but I think it really hurts the story because a big reason of why these kids are doing this, killing this creature, is so that the town can prosper for another year. But the way they film it is in a way where like, well, the town's not even prospering. What the fuck are we doing? Like, what's the point of this whole charade? Uh, so I think that hurts it. And also I would say one of the antagonists of the movie is uh, the sheriff, Sheriff uh, Ricks. Ricks. That dude fucking sucks. Like the, uh, I really hate the actor in that. Like he's going for like a cartoon character villain and it sticks out, I think to the rest of the movie, like, cause he's just like so over the top and overacting. I just think it's a real bad casting option because that character could be an interesting, vi like villainous character. Mm -hmm. But the way this guy plays him, is just kind of like eye rolly. Like every time he's on screen, like, okay, dude, come on, stop it. Uh, the last thing I'll say before I throw it to you for overall thoughts is um, I'm trying to look up. Who Imagine like Stephen Lang was officer Ricks. Oh, that would be sick. You know what I mean? That'd be awesome. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is, so the cinematographer is Larry Smith. I think this movie looks gorgeous. Like so many of the shots, like the way they kind of put a harsh light, but there's a character always in front of it. So they're, backlit by it and there's always shit floating through the breeze so it gives the cornfield a ethereal look to it i think the movie looks gorgeous which i was not expecting this uh horror film to kind of bring because a lot of horror films don't look cinematically beautiful you have to go into like the like your hereditaries and stuff like that to get like great cinematography most times but i think he did a really great job in this movie i think it looks gorgeous and yeah uh, i i ended up giving the movie a three out of five I think I'll probably lower it to a 2.5 after I, after some a week removed from it, but I did have a lot more fun with it than I thought I would going in. And uh, I, I like this a lot better than a lot of other horror films, to be honest. So like, I'll definitely rewatch this before I rewatch a, uh, the witch or something like that. Mm. Even though I think the witch is a better movie, but it's just more fun. It is a fun one. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like this movie very much, but I, I, did think it was visually stunning. Like I was struck by how gorgeous it is. It just felt like at times the script was written in crayon and that mm -hmm. was kind of bothering me. Um, the hearing the bluff plum describe it in the different, you know, ways of describing it to someone who's never seen it made it sound like in my memory, way cooler, like the hunger games, uh, all that, you know, it's like, there's a lot of stuff going on here. That's really cool. But I was upset. Like you talk, you talk about the lore, I don't feel like there is lore like like the officer Ricks at the big reveal moment literally says just because we always do it, man. Like it's not I don't unless I miss something. It's not well, I think, explained. I think it's the lore of a town that just kind of accepts like, oh, we do this really weird ritual every year. There's a ritualistic. I love to that. It, yeah. That there. That, but the fact that there's nothing deeper in that upsets me. Like I just need a little something, something like you think it's a ritual about protecting the town and it kind of is but really we have to sacrifice uh 
one of our kids in this bloody ceremony in order to keep the spirits at bay, like sacrifice more than one kid. Exactly. Yeah. Like potentially, <laughs> uh, you know, like that's what, that, that's what I need. Like there's a spirit that da, 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 like, and we have to, it, it's hungry. Like what is the magic or supernatural force that allows the, the body to reanimate? And, you know, like, I guess it doesn't matter, but it, to me, it kind of does. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel to me like, Oh, we wanted to keep the mystery there because it's scarier or something. It just feels to me like they literally don't know. Mm -hmm. And that kind of bothers me. Uh, and to your point about having the story spoiled, that's one of the things that ruined it for me early on is that I, I um, and maybe it's obvious and it's not that I'm smart, but I guess the twist within like seven minutes. I'm glad you said that because I, as I was watching this, I knew what the twist was. So, but as I was watching it, I was like, I feel like they're telegraphing this twist way too hard. Yes. But I didn't, but again, I didn't have that perspective. So I'm glad you said that. Like shortly after Jim drives off and it's like the time jump happens, they're like at the school gymnasium talking about it or something. Uh, and certainly by the time he's wondering where his brother is, but just the way they were talking about, uh, oh, he's out in California somewhere. Like one of the kids says that. And I'm like, oh, he's fucking Sawtooth Jack. Like they take the winner and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really quickly. And so... 45 minutes before the big belt buckle reveal, you know, I was, I was on board with that already. So that wasn't like, a, Oh, that wasn't a fun moment there. Mm -hmm. I was just waiting for it, but there's some great kills in this movie. Um, a really neat setting. I do love, you know, the different homage set, but I just wish I understood more. Like, why are they wearing masks? I know I get that it's Halloween, but like, mm -hmm. is the thing not supposed to see your face or cause you can see whenever they run into salt tooth, they go, Oh, and they pull down their masks. Mm -hmm. Why? I, d I do. Yes, everything you I agree with everything you say completely. Like the the movie to me really does fall apart when the actual Halloween night kind of happens because so much of what they're establishing doesn't make sense and there's a lot of like well why are they doing it this way? It would make more sense if they would do it this way if this was the end goal. Uh it, yeah, it, it is kind of a bummer cuz I th I think there's like an even better version of this movie if they had like a tighter script. And from what I understand, I'm, uh, I didn't read the book or anything, but I was this morning, I was trying to look up like, what are the differences between the book and the movie? And it seems like there are a lot of stark differences between the book because the book, from what I understand, like won like some like uh, uh, not like awards for writing, which is kind of funny when you think like, because I do think the script is the weakest part of this movie. Yeah, for by sure. Far. And so it's just kind of like, ah, oh, I wish they would have gotten like a better screenwriter to kind of bring that story to life. Yeah, like it's almost there and being this wonderful little underground gem. I think I was a little overly harsh on this movie. I had to watch three movies yesterday uh, and three episodes of a TV show that I'm reviewing that comes out next week. So where did this fall in the lineup? It was early on, but it was still oh. like the dread of how much I had to do, yeah. you know, and I was supposed to mow the lawn, which I didn't. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think I... This harshed my mellow a little bit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All of that stuff made me like a little overly harsh on this movie, but it, cause it is gorgeous. Uh, and there's a lot of fun to be had here. This episode of Streaming Things is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Sleep. You would sleep more. More, yeah. Okay, sleep that's more. fair. Some people might go for a run, read an extra book. A lot of us spend our whole lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. That's what therapy can do. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do more of it. You can learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. You can get empowered to be the best version of yourself. You can also nap. You can also just nap. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, if you've never tried it, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. 
spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento7, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things and let's get back to the show. Uh, let's do the recap. So it's Halloween, like we said. We learn early on about Sawtooth Jack. We're kind of thrust in media res into this like oh, ritual. Oh, Sawtooth Jack. Yeah, I like He's the- He's coming back every <laughs> year. I like the like radio show undertones of that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a dude in a mask and he's got a crowbar and he's apparently allergic. Sneezy boy. He's sneezy boy. That's, that's what I wrote in as my notes. It's I'm, sneezy boy. I had mask crowbar boy sneezing. We're, we're the same person. And then there's some kind of <laughs> These flaming my- cornfield monster. I write, <laughs> I wrote sneezy boy. This pollen looks terrible for him. It does. Sneezy boy. Sneezy boy swings wildly. Oh, he's on fire. Oh, <laughs> that's probably, he's probably allergic to fire as well. Yeah. He dies. And then the other armed bros look concerned. They chase it through the to the cornfield. They beat the fuck out of it. And <laughs> that's my notes. Uh, and then they reach inside and eat. And I put it. It's I thought it was corn. I thought it was literally a corn. It's cob. corn. <laughs> it's got the juice. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe this is why the movie like it's not a good horror movie vibe. It's corn. It has the juice. Dang. <laughs> it's corn. So that's not already. I'm like, I'm not scared. I'm singing that in my head for the next 20 minutes. It is a bold choice to be like, here is this monster that is the monster of the movie that's going to kill a lot of people. But he dies immediately. Like they kill the monster it's, so in, quickly. It's intriguing, right? Yeah. Because you're just kind of like, what is this movie? And then they're eating it. And you, I don't know that it's candy. I thought it was really bad uh, effects on the intestines and stuff. I'm like, oh, that oh looks- I, I picked up on the candy immediately. <laughs> like, oh, that's gross. I was watching it on that <laughs> monitor you gave me and, you know, taking doing my note thing now. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I did laugh really hard when all the kids were like, Jimmy is the winner. <laughs> Jimmy is the winner. Like this guys, this is the worst chant ever. Jim's the hyped man. Jimmy like, is I the wanted winner. somebody in the background. I go, who the fuck is Jimmy? Who the fuck is Jimmy? <laughs> uh, and then we get to the, the midnight dance. We, we learn a little bit about the harvesters guild. He gets a prize. They get a new house. He gets a Corvette and they say, you're going to be our emissary to the larger world. So I'm intrigued by this. Like, oh, do they not? Is it like a Amish folk or something? Like they have to proselytize. Like they don't get to leave very often. Go okay. tell, go forth and tell everybody about how we beat the shit out of this poor monster once a year and eat his candy inside. Mm. And then he Does gets not a, every town do this for Halloween. <laughs> is Are we the assholes? How do you celebrate? <laughs> Wait till you see how we do Easter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we beat the fuck out of a bunny. <laughs> we can't let it. it it's the opposite. The bunny comes out of the church. <laughs> Valentine's Day. We just beat our wives. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is this? It is the fifties. That's right. Uh, and then he goes up to his little brother and he goes, I love you, baby B. He does this Austin Butler Elvis thing and rolls out. Right. Take uh, me with you. Yeah. Take me with you. Take me with you. And then we, there ain't no stop signs on the black road. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I did write. What does that mean? I don't know what that means, <laughs> but it sounds cool. Yeah. Jim takes off in his new Corvette and uh, there's a time jump about a year later. We get in the school speech. It's almost time again. So we're learning. It grows all year, this monster and rises every Halloween. And then they starve the seniors for three days, Senior lock them boys. in the rooms, boys only. That's important. No food, no mommy, no nothing. Uh, and then they have to get let out and get in and go hunt it. So they're all hungry for that candy. And baby B's like a greaser. LOL is my note. <laughs> he's, he's grown up. Yeah. What, what is there? 
what is their, uh, is it Misfits? What is their the bandits, gang name? I think. Bandits. The Bandits. The Bandits. Um, yeah. And then their, their kids are arguing if it's even real. Like, it's just a legend there. I'm pretty sure it's just a homeless guy. They put a pumpkin on him. <laughs> Uh, and then they, the one of the one of the bandits says, "I've seen it." And this Bud, kid, poor Bud, he's terrible. He's not a good actor. And that's one of the things I start going downhill at this point because when I was nine, like I hate the bu- the racist bully kid so much. But like in this moment, I'm like, I would have bullied him. I'd have been like, dude, shut up. I did laugh that I the uh, the kid who's like a pacifist. He's like, I don't want to kill nobody. Uh, you can't make me kill it. You can make me run. His name is Pinko. <laughs> It's like it's, it's on the nose. I'm I'm like, <laughs> and then yeah, um, my I, so I okay, so I never caught the name of the racist bully kid, Carl. Is it Carl? I made that up. Oh, okay, I never picked up on Me his either. name. So in my notes, I only call him Letter Jacket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, my next note is baby B runs like a baby bitch from the bully because I was kind of upset that he's like looks back, sees him and literally just takes off like you socked him in the face. Mm-hmm. Do it again. Yeah. Like what is going on right now? It's not like he has his six buddies with him or anything. It's just him. Yeah. It's one on one. He's a one V one. Yeah. And then the letter jackets in the back like one V one me. One V one me. One V one me. One V one me. Nope. He won't. We, we do find out uh, Officer Ricks does say that uh, Richie, baby B, he's not allowed to partake in this year. Because his brother won. Because his brother won last year. This is where it's it dawned on me because I realized the reason why he's not allowed is because you you die and it's not fair to a family to take all of your kids. Like it, it all this the same private Ryan situation. It, yeah. It came together <laughs> this quickly. And not that I'm that smart. I just think it's not hidden very well. And it would be a cool reveal. Um. So he hides in the movie theater, ends up chatting with his crush. Kelly, I think her name is. She works at the movie theater. Um, he wants some jujubes. He, he, they we don't hear, sell those. There's a rumor going around that she burned down old, burned down old man Begley's barn. And the the mine shaft. Mm. Yeah. She just, she's just, just setting fire to everything. Just raising hell. Mm. Yeah. But Plan. she's not from the town, which is rare to have out of townies living here, apparently. That's right. It's very rare. I don't even know why they would, given what goes on, let her in there. I don't know. He, he runs into like a convenience store to get some snacks. And they, even that guy is like, you should be more manly. <laughs> He's like, look, man, I'm just hungry. What are you talking about? Your brother was a great football player. Why can't you be more like your brother? You're not going to be as good as him, but you might be decent. He won the, the, the contest last year. He was also like head of the varsity team. <sighs> Got a got a huge huge Rooney. All the girls are saying it. Man, the arm. All the boys on, are saying it. The arm on that boy, and he had two of them. Yeah, imagine, imagine what you could do with both of them. Can you believe if he had a third? Ooh boy, hot diggity dog. Oh, my next note is ooh. I bet his brother isn't in Santa Clara. He's the the next Sawtooth Jack. So this is the moment. I don't know why, but it just yeah. But it is it is obvious because literally everyone he talks to is like, well, "How's your brother doing?" I hear he's in insert completely different town. Right. Yeah. So like no one knows where he is, what he's doing. He's just driving around that Corvette, baby. Yeah, you know, wonder what they do with all the old Corvettes, sell them back. <laughs> Probably. They How does the Harvester Guild have so much money? Well, it's because of the harvesting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the, the greasers decide we can win this together and we can be neighbor brothers again. Cause Jim's family, Richie's family, got to move to the rich side of town as part of their winnings. And now, so he moved away with his poor buddy. Uh, I forget what his poor buddy's name is, but he's the one who gets like half his head cut off, right? Dylan, I think. Yeah. He's like the worst line in the movie. Richie? Let's do murder together or something when he's driving. (laughs) I'll get it. I wrote it down. Uh, But they did like, everybody's telling him, you can't win it again. His parents are upset. You can't win it again. No, we need to just chill. Fuck the rules. (laughs) That's, That's his thing. So his dad... Abuses him, slaps him across the face. Mm-hmm. You don't say fuck the rules in this house. This house, that's one of the rules. We make love to the rules. All right. <laughs> right. Sweet, sweet, tender love to he's, those rules. He's like a, 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 a angry, abusive Ted from Stranger Things. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? I only slapped my kid. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's yeah. a drop subplot here because they're talking about, I guess, Jim had a girlfriend named Annie and she's like, apparently like super miserable and misses him and like, she, is that the girl that wants to go with Jim at the end? Yeah. And like he, Richie. Yeah. And she has a cigarette with him at one point at his own mm-hmm. house. Yeah. I really think like that's a character they should have like elevated and had more <laughs> of you? because when she does pop up, every time she pops up, you kind of for, had forgotten about her. So every time she comes up, it's like, wait, who was that again? Why can't they have a lady uh, sawtooth? Why can't it be a sawtooth Jill? 
I don't know. That's why girls can't play. They don't want to make the salt tooth Jill. What you, what's next? You're going to allow them a vote too? It would take forever to put a <laughs> wig on the pumpkin. Oh yeah. We have to use yarn or something. God damn it. I got to go get lipstick for this Jacko <laughs> lantern. This is bullshit. Back in my day, we didn't even let them out of the kitchen. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Now they're doing all kinds of Now they're of learning and reading and counting. And that fighting. one's got a job. <laughs> my huh. stars. No wonder she ain't got no man. But hey, the 50s were the best times. <laughs> <laughs> Baby booming. Richie's homesick for the East Side. This is when he goes and has a cigarette with his, uh, who I didn't even recognize was his older brother's ex-girlfriend. Uh, and we see that older farmer guy hanging the pumpkin boy on the cross. That can't be good. And then the bully finds Richie. Whoosh, boom. Takes his belt buckle, as you do. Give me that belt buckle. That's a nice motherfucking belt buckle. There's some awful fake punches in this. Like, he's clearly not even hitting. Did you see when it cut to, like, the bully's buddy? And every the, time there's a kid? flap, he's like, ha, whoa, <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a hit. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, and then he gets his letter, quote unquote, <laughs> from Jim. Uh, Cause he got a postcard before and he's like, wait, can't even write me a letter. So the mom is writing this shit, right? It's very obvious. Hey baby B don't what? worry. You should definitely not try to play in the game. I hope you're not thinking about that. You should probably get a job at a factory, be a supportive member to society. Also, also be call, nicer to your mother. Also call your mom sometimes. <laughs> right. Mom. Don't you think she's lost some weight? <laughs> Mom, I think it's weird that it's, it's like Jimmy like left and all of a sudden like his handwriting looks exactly like yours. It's wild. It's not weird. It happens as you get oh, older. Like mother, like son. <laughs> no. Here's more pills. <laughs> I love this is where like the script is just such a tiny thing, but it's it's indicative of what the, the issues of the writing are as a whole. I'm pretty sure I could, I could have just. And by the way, this might be wrong. I'm 90 percent sure the prescription bottle that she has says Mrs. Shepherd. Um, it's just prescribed to Mrs. Shepard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so lazy. Like <laughs> you didn't give her a name, did you? <laughs> That's not how pharmacies work. Well, if you give them names, they're going to start being in the competition. Why does this bottle say Richie's mother? Uh, this is what they call me at yeah. the pharmacy. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to stab my face later. <laughs> 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 I, my notes for that scene are literally fuck this movie. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, he decides after the letter to go drinking and driving. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. He's going to go kill the yanglings. And, uh, <laughs> the cop just beats the shit out of him. Yeah. Is he leaving town or something? I kind of lost track of what was going on. Yeah, I think he's just like so upset with everything that he's like, fuck this town. I'm leaving. And, but no one's allowed to leave the right. town without the harvester guild's approval. Yeah, so, even vacations. Yeah, even vacations. And and apparently the cop has literally nothing else better to do than just patrol the one road that leads in and Don't out of town. Don't go down that road. Don't go down that road. It's a whole other world down that road. I may not be a smart man, but I know who Sawtooth Jackie is. <laughs> it's Jim. It's Jimmy. That's all I got to say about that. The year before, it was whoever the mom said it was. Did you see what he was wearing? He had a belt buckle and he could just keep on a running. Those look like comfortable shoes. I bet you could kill kids all day in shoes <laughs> like that and not feel a thing. By the way, did they even like make the connection that Jimmy also wore that belt buckle? We made that connection because we're genius. Okay. Well, I didn't I didn't know if the film like told no, us like this is I don't Jim's remember belt seeing buckle. It. I don't remember seeing it. Because honestly, when, um, so the bully takes Richie's belt buckle at right. one point, I honestly wasn't. Come I, here, I'm going to beat your ass and take your pants off. I had to, <laughs> to rewind because I didn't understand what he took. Like, why did he take, what did he take? All oh, I he took his belt buckle? That's he fucking said, weird. Give me that. And then started taking his belt off. And I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's going full action flea bottom and here then it cuts to his butt like oh yeah oh yeah give it to him oh, hard wow i yeah. wish i could do that oh you start with that <laughs> is there candy in there <laughs> <laughs> anyway all the kids are locked up now at this point in the movie for sawtooth run night uh and they're stuffing the sawtooth full of candy the farmer is it's the same candy every year, too. You think you'd switch it up, so throw some goddamn Twix in there or something. Yeah. Baby Ruth. Whoa. Uh, it's still not clean. Like, that's a real corpse, you know? 
Yeah. And whose job is it to like take all the guts out? I guess the farmer. The farmer, yeah. The farmer looks like that's just like what he does. Like, well, time for me to go dissect a boy that I had in the ground for most of the year. I just putter fuck around in the farm all year until it's time to stuff the corpse. I'm seemingly the only farmer in this town of farming. (laughs) There's a harvest of skill, but I literally harvest the entire... I'm actually wondering what everybody else fucking does around here. (laughs) One lady works at the movie theater. That's a kid. I mean, really, the cop's the only one that shows up and even asks me how my day's going. <laughs> <laughs> which, honestly, fuck all these kids, really, when you think about it. And which annoys me, because ACAB, you know? But, <laughs> but, yeah. I got a job to do. But, hey, I do like carving the pumpkin face. Mm, that's my favorite part. I, I, people don't ask me this, but I'm actually an artist. You know how hard it is to find a white pumpkin? <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I got to go to the white pumpkin patch. <laughs> Clear on the other side of the town. It's on the rich side of the neighborhood. <laughs> it's on the west side, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Anyway, all the kids are locked up, complaining, even though they were prepared for the Mom, seriously, I'm hungry. Um, and then, the, by the way, you don't get, like, after three days without eating. Rabbits? Andy does it all the time. He fasts all the time. You're not going to murder people and stuff after three, maybe kids. I don't know. But <laughs> he honestly said after the first 24 hours, it's, like, easy. Like, you just get used to it. Mm-hmm. I've never done it. I love food, but I'm just taking his word for it. I was going to say, like, this is literally me after a half hour of not eating food. So. I'm, I'm waiting for this DoorDash ramen right now. I know. I ain't going to lie to you. Yep. It's going to be dope. The doors pop open. It's time for the run. Richie wakes up. It's been three fucking days. By the way, he's got to have shit his pants. And right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that how being passed out works? Like, yeah, the beds. It's not like he's got a pants. catheter in. Mm-hmm. He just stands right up, puts his jacket on, like, quick, quick, quick. Running around with the, like shit drawers. Yeah, dirty diaper. Yeah, and his dad's all drunk. <laughs> Come on, son. You just got to hang out with your old pop. Watch no. Survivor season four. Please, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> who's going who's gonna to be voted off the island, boy? Come on. <laughs> Did you hear Richard went to prison? He didn't pay his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> Remember season one of Survivor <laughs> from 20. I'm glad you. Five years ago. Got my reference. <laughs> He was the guy that was naked all the time, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Making alliances. Yep. (laughs) Any (laughs) who's Naked, making alliances. That's right. Uh, All the other greaser kids get in their old shitty truck and start driving around. You're not allowed to have a truck. You're supposed to run, but nobody's enforcing these rules. Fuck them rules. That's what they keep saying. You dickweeds are just jealous you didn't think of this idea. (laughs) And then uh, Richie shows up. He's got one of his mom's cupcakes, and he tosses it to the bullies to like distract because they're so hungry. (laughs) Cupcake. I love your mom's cake. And then they... Yeah, this whole... So I really dislike... Like, if there's one thing I really dislike about this movie, it's the whole subplot where they lock the kids up and starve them, and then they're just... I'm okay with that. Weird little goblins. I love the chaos and stuff. I just think there's a couple things, a couple tweaks, a couple performances, some extra little well, lore well, where the, I would love this movie. The, well, the thing that drives me nuts is so, again, the whole point of this ritual is... Hey, we're a farming town. We rely on our crops. We kill this monster because if we don't do it, uh, there's like a plague or something that ruins the crops for the year. Yeah. Right. And cops brothers go get, get, get die a, a full of sand in the driveway because <laughs> mm-hmm. he can't find the house. Mm-hmm. So the whole thing is to protect the the town. Okay. Sure. But every you're telling me every year you're also instigating this whole entire notion that Oh, the kids are going to be feral to the point where they're going to break into all of the places that have food and axe people's heads off just for like a Twizzler. Uh, well, I don't think that normally happens. That's why the cop repeatedly says like this year has been fucking wild, dude. Because well, we saw the previous year normally. when Jim killed the monster, dispatched them pretty quickly. I think we lost but, one kid last year. That the, the sneezy boy. But like in theory, if they're always starving these kids like this. It just to me, it seemed like this isn't actually what is helping a town. Like when half of your towns, like the butcher gets killed and like, yeah, like this I don't was, know, it just doesn't, it's, it becomes no. the purge well, and it's just like, this it, doesn't it, make it sense. It was very, it was purge vibes, but I think you're supposed to understand that this is an unusual year. Things are out of control. There's greasers. Kids keep saying, fuck the rules. They're driving trucks. Kids what is days. going on? Yeah. Kids these days. This used to be a wholesome town where we would Kill one, maybe two kids. Yeah. Now, 13, 14, now plus the, whole, the butcher. Now the whole class of 1954 is gone. One of the adults, with uh, the, the six adults that has jobs in this town died. Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. It's unreasonable. And literally probably, I don't know, 50 kids probably died. The wrong kid died. How many people live in this town where you have a graduating <laughs> class of over 50 kids? 
You know? I mean, how many was in yours? Well, like 400. Yeah. Four or 500. That's a big town. But that's a big town. Yeah, this no- is like a t- small little farming community town. Yeah. Apparently they need more kids after this. They had to import them. Because <laughs> uh, they would be running out for sure. Mm-hmm. You think the guy that gets held back, like the guy that keeps failing junior year, <laughs> dodge <laughs> another one. Dodge another one. Eventually they're going to have to let me just leave the school and not participate. <laughs> Honestly, I like running, but I'm grateful. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Mr. Sawtooth Jack. (laughs) I don't know why they wanted to fight him. He just was a nice Christian boy who wanted to go to church. They said he was full of candy or something. But I never saw any of that. (laughs) Yeah. Anywho, if we have any listeners left... um, (laughs) But yeah, buds. They're running amok. And we get the line. Come on to a violent world with me. That's the line that I was like, nah. Didn't. So that's that's a misfits take two line. Yeah, but like the way he delivers it. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, I I don't I wasn't really bothered. I like the eye paint and all that stuff. And again, I'm already like I'm nitpicking at this point because I'm a little annoyed. Like I've guessed the twist. Yeah, yeah, his line delivery of that line, I didn't think it was egregious or anything. It, I mean, honestly, it was about the same as people in Westworld going like these violent delights have violent ends, like that kind of shit. You are high. <laughs> I mean, obviously he's no pedigree of the actors that are in that show, but it was like, you eh, keep whatever. Evan Rachel Wood's name out of your goddamn mouth. <laughs> I'll take some James Marsden slander, but only a little bit. Uh, and then he has more, <laughs> that one but, dude, Bud has more Sawtooth flashbacks at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's got Sawtooth Jack PTSD because I guess he saw Sawtooth Jack when he was, when he was a little kid. Yeah. And he saw some I mean, that other, would be scary. Oh, yeah. If you look out the window, what do you, you see the a high school design of Sawtooth. You like that? You like that? I do. It's, it's, it's goofy. It's silly. Some might say it's stupid looking, but all of those he things. He looks like Mr. Meeseys. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, I like it when horror movies are like a little silly and it's like obviously a, a dumb looking puppet, like that stuff's endearing to me. So, and, and honestly, when the whole point of the lore is like, oh, that's actually a, a kid that's been resurrected to be, and he has a pumpkin head. Yeah. That's like grafted to his face. I, I kind of think it needs to be a little endearing. And I think the costume design does kind of work. Cause I do kind of like how he's like, just, <laughs> What's he using to like cut people's heads off? Now? I was going to ask you that. I don't know how Sawtooth Jack kills anyone in this movie except Sneezy Boy. Like I, I can wrap my head around that. He just breathes fire on him. He has like flame powers at some point. Yeah. Like flame on. What's up with that, Johnny? <laughs> yeah. So I can wrap my head around that. But with the fact that like kids are getting like their heads cut off, like in the middle of. Especially running through the cornfield specifically. There always seems to be like a a blade that gets like the second kid, like, like one kid gets cut straight in half. Yeah. But it doesn't have like a, um, what's that cool thing called? A scythe? Scythe? Or like a, yeah. Scyther. Scyther, Scyther. A Pokemon? Yeah. He has a Pokemon that runs out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you never really see Sawtooth Jack like killing people. It's always just implied that he's doing it. So I really. Well, you do. He rips that dude's face in half. Poor bud. Oh, that's true. He's yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's a lot of part. it's like he's off like, screen. I love when he walks into the cellar full of kids and then just like thousands of gallons the, of blood. The shining elevator opens up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's funny to imagine them all dying down there though. Cause they, they were all greedy and except for the one kid that was like, I need to help him. We got to help him. Yeah. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, but yeah, they, I think they accidentally hit Sawtooth Jack with their truck, or at least they think they do. And then they get out like, oh, okay, it's time. And, you know, it won't start anymore. Let's get him. Maybe it's over. Maybe we just killed. Well, I, I wish they had if they just like killed him with the truck accidentally. And we're like, well, I was driving. I guess I win. Do, do we eat him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not hungry, honestly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like sweets. <laughs> I'll eat the pumpkin. We can make a pie out of him. A we pumpkin can, pie. We can, I love pumpkin pie. I, oh, but brother, don't even get me started. Am I pe- preaching to the choir mm, right oh now? Oh yeah, I I pray every day <laughs> in the church of pumpkin the pie. The church of pumpkin pie. <laughs> and by the saint of whipped cream. Carissa and I will buy a whole pumpkin pie and just cut it in half. <laughs> this is yours. This is my half. And just eat it like in one sitting. Yeah, we fuck with it heavy with a bunch of whipped cream. Man, I, I, man, I, I stand you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't fuck around. That's why I'm built so sexy. <laughs> it's that pumpkin pie body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you call for, me Sawtooth Jack. I'm going for Sawtooth Jack this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Charlie goes down early, and then the uh, the driver guy, I don't know what his name is. Dylan. 
Dylan. Dylan, you son of a bitch. Cut in half. He's got, he's not going to move to the West side and hang out with, uh, Richie no more. I love how mm. Richie immediately forgets his buddy. Like they have like, yeah, these, like <laughs> these grand plans of like, oh, we're going to live together. You're my bro, Dylan. And Dylan just eats it in the worst way. And he, mm. eh, whatever. I mean, his mom dies and he's literally like, come on, Kelly. <laughs> I didn't like her anyway. Uh, so then at this point, Richie sees Sawtooth doesn't do shit, honestly. And then he loses his mask. And I thought it was going to be more of a thing that without the mask, Sawtooth Jack would recognize him as his little brother, which he kind of does. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it focuses on the mask. At this point, Kelly runs up. She's got like a little Zorro mask on and she's like, we got to kill it. Dumb, dumb. Why are you being such a bitch? Yeah. Uh, and, and I love he, that. Like, uh, did you kill it? No. Well, let's go kill it. Like, yeah, just, what are you talking about? Why are you <laughs> sitting here? Well, you can't even fight it. You're a girl. And he's like, you can't fight it either. Your brother won. Fuck, fuck the, the rules. rules. Yeah. Fuck the rules. Yeah. I forgot. Uh, yeah. And then the, the sad dude, Bud is trying to get his mommy to let him in and her, her and his dad come out like, could be a little bitch. <laughs> Make us proud, son. is so funny. Uh, But then I did like this scene a lot where it cuts to the analog bud of another little kid saying, behind you. you." So now that he's going to be traumatized from this moment. Yeah. uh, So he finds the cellar, people hiding in there. And we get this whole shtick about them not wanting to let him in without 20 20. bucks. 20 bucks is a fucking lot of money back then. Yeah, I know. I don't know. What is it? 200? Seriously, that's a ton of money. Yeah. How about two bucks? Anyway, what was what was. $20 Twenty dollars, doll hairs, dollars in the what? The fifties? Is that where we're going? Yeah, worth in the nineteen fifties. Thank you for well adjusted this. to today. Yeah, uh, yeah, two hundred or twenty twenty bucks in nineteen fifty would have equal to two hundred and fifty dollars in twenty twenty four. Movie. Uh, Who's carrying two hundred fifty dollars in cash nowadays? Yeah, seniors in high school apparently in this town. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I'll give twenty dollars. I'll get it to you. You will not, bud. No. Let's be honest. That truck you were driving. Is not worth two hundred fifty. He bucks. wasn't even driving. He was writing "bitch" in that truck. <laughs> <laughs> I got this for five dollars in a pack of red vines. Um, yeah, so he, you know, we get the whole like the shining elevator thing of blood out of the cellar. Uh, we cut to Richie's breaking into a house. Uh, I, I still don't understand what's going on here. I guess his, the dad was going to the cop's house to like complain. He's upset about his dead eldest son, um, but also like. Officer Ricks is next door, like giving somebody shit. Maybe you're not supposed to know. You're just supposed to know he's an asshole, but you can hear him like shit doesn't go on in this town. unless I fucking know about it. You thought you were going to get away with it. Like, we, I don't know what the context of that is. I, yeah, I went online and someone was saying that the, the I don't know how true this is, but someone was saying the context of that is the dude in the ghost sheet was in officer Rick's house, having an affair with his wife and that, but I don't know how true that is. Cause even if that is the case, that, that's not really well illustrated at all in the movie. Like I don't, I wasn't picking up on that. Do so, with the bloody stomach ghost sheet guy. Yeah. What is that? Well, how do you get a bloody stomach? I don't fucking know. It, I'm, I, this scene gives me so many questions that are not answered <laughs> yeah. at all. It's wild, but he steals like the spare gun from officer Ricks. Meanwhile, his dad shows up and knocks. He comes out he grabbed a beer too. Like, here you go. <laughs> She's like, you came here for yinglings lager. We're killing yinglings. No, I got a gun. Um, and then we find out it was the cop's house and we hear all that commotion with officer Rick's next door. And then he jump starts, not jump starts. He hot wires the car, the, the squad the car, squad car. Yeah. And, uh, he tells Kelly and Rick like, just immediately starts opening fire on them as they're I driving know away. Things. Yeah. Shoot at the children in your car. That's yeah. immediately what you do. Well, I mean, he does murder kids pretty often, so it's not like he's opposed yeah. to that. Right. Uh, and then we hear there's action on Main Street through from the dispatcher. Down on Main Street. Mm. And then th- <laughs> this whole scene where the butcher is just shooting the kids is fucking awesome. <laughs> I love it. Come on. Come on. You want some? Because <laughs> they're just hungry. I need a sandwich. <laughs> Who else wants a fucking sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm glad you love that scene. I, I hated that scene. Because <laughs> again, I'm just like so wrapped up. Like, what's the point of this fucking ritual? If like the butcher has to no. shoot down kids every day. This is great. I, I did laugh initially because uh, you, you see the butcher early on in the scene where he's just got his gun just standing like, eh, the kids might break into my shop. Yep. Like that. That was yeah. fun. But I yeah. know they're hungry and I do sell exclusively num nums. I do make the window dressing of my shop very good. I'm good at what I do. I know yeah, it's right. tempting them very much. Most people would hang them in a freezer. Not nah. me. Open Rotting air. carcasses. Open, <laughs> Open air. <laughs> right in the window. Mm-hmm. 
we got to eat these today, kids. I ain't going to lie to you. These ain't going to keep very long. And then, uh, yeah, so he gets killed by, he gets hit with the head with a brick and then chopped to pieces by the kids. Yeah. There's also that scene, I'm sure it's coming up soon, but just in case I skipped over it, where that one kid comes out and he's like, <laughs> I'm going to be the fucking winner this year. Who wants some? And then some other kid just me? <laughs> stabs him right through the skull with a machete immediately <laughs> without even like blinking. Yeah. He, and he, like, he, fuck he, you, he Carl. walks up like, and then there's a beat where they look at each other. like, oh, you think you got what it takes? <laughs> you just get stabbed. Yeah, you're done. No, no lines of dialogue. You're so done. Funny. Uh, but yeah, um, they, they, I think the racist bully kid runs into uh, Richie and Kelly and he's like, that's a gun. She's a girl. And then thwap, they get fucked up. Mm-hmm. She even picks up their bat and hits them a few extra times for being racist, which is awesome. Yep. And he's like, yeah, give me my belt buckle, bitch. Yeah. I, I, this is my brother's got one. Yeah. The belt buckle thing was so funny to me. Like, I, I, This is really important to me. My belt buckle. Yeah. My prized belt buckle. Why do you think he called me baby B? It's belt for buckle. belt buckle. Yeah. It's not for Richie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's the letter of brother, right? Baby brother. Oh, yeah. Baby B. Is it is Richie short for something like a Bridgie? Bridgie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes sense. So then it's baby brother, and then the kids are killing each other. Uh, you know, it's and then we cut to the kids that are just getting high. Me and my <laughs> friends during the purge. Those poor kids. Was, they're just huffing, <laughs> giggling. Uh, and then they run into uh, Sawtooth Tony or Sawtooth Tony, <laughs> Sawtooth Jack, Bullet Tooth Tony is what I was thinking of <laughs> from fucking Snatch. Uh, but yeah, if this is where we they talk about how you have to ask the guild if you want to leave town, all that shit. Uh, we find out a lot about Kelly. I still don't really understand though. Her parents were from this town. They left, which is not allowed. They died in a car accident. She returned to live with her aunt. Who hates her. Who does hate her. But she's not a pyromaniac. I don't understand where all those rumors came from. Um, But plot twist, she is a pyromaniac because she did do all those things. Mm. Yeah. You think I'm just some kind of pyromaniac? Yes. Yes. That's why I love Sawtooth Jack because he's (laughs) got my number. Mm -hmm. Setting fires. I love it. So they run into Sawtooth. Uh, and this is where we get the scene where he sees the belt buckle. He realizes that's his brother. Oh, (gasps) no. Oh, no. Yeah. This edit was wild because there's that really cool shot where Saw Two Jack walks up behind them. It's yeah. again cinematography in this movie. Great. Great. Amazing. And they have that little fight where he can't shoot him because it's like, oh, that's my brother. Kelly kind of saves them a bit. They get, you know, backhanded away by Saw Two Jack. And then Saw Two Jack is just gone. He disappears. And a random dude shows up out of nowhere with a shotgun, like, well, get, try it, kids. Get the fuck out of here. And I was so confused by the this edit. Like, I the feel The blocking like, is weird. Blocking is so weird because for half a second, I'm like, wait, is Saw Tooth Jack uh, just a, a square with a shotgun? Yeah. <laughs> they were hallucinating him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, he just smoke bombed and rolled out because he was scared about, oh, is that my little brother? Um, but yeah, he chases them Baby off beat. and then the cop finds him at this point. He's mad about the whole car thing. And then, uh, this is where he goes home and talks to his mama and, uh, she's tripping balls. She's on her Mrs. Shepard prescribed medicine. <laughs> uh, he asks his mom about the letter and then she, I guess in, it's because of the medicine and because of the intense guilt that she's been suppressing with the meds all this time, she just snaps and stabs herself in the neck. Mm-hmm. But it just, it should have been shocking and crazy, but it was just like, fuck this to yeah, me. I don't think the scene with the mom works at all. Uh, but I do, I do like how, cause he's getting to the point they're doing this over dramatic lead up of like, who, who won last year, mom? Oh, it was this person. What happened to them? Oh, I don't know. And it's, it's building up. And the whole time it keeps cutting to soft to Jack going into their old home. Mm-hmm. And you see like, fuck off, it's Rick's on the like spray paint on the yeah. wall. Assumedly, Richie goes there all the time and just hangs out in their old house. I guess. But the shot of uh, Sawtooth Jack burning down the home like is like a really cool shot. Again, yeah. cinematography. Gorgeous. Awesome. Gorgeous. Great, great looking movie. I like to think that Sawtooth Jack was in there just writing that. Like he would <laughs> hop off the cross at night and just. Fuck Peter. Officer Riggs. Mm. I need to find a pumpkin girlfriend. He's like drawing like a, the number eight <laughs> and then an equal sign and then a capital D. <laughs> Why can't they make a sawtooth Jill for me to hang out with? Mm. On the on the cross? I'll give her a... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why don't they give her a belt buckle I can match with? 
Mm. We could bump buckles. Bump, oh, baby B. <laughs> baby B. <laughs> anyway, bumpy B. Um, <laughs> yeah, so all that shit happens. And then uh, the, the dad is like holding up Officer Ricks with a shotgun. This guy gets sawed off double barrel. It's fucking dope. And Rick's like, I love, I know the sheriff is like overdoing it a lot. Yeah. But also it's really funny that his whole character is basically like, stop being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you be a little baby. <laughs> oh, oh, my, my kid died. My, my, my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's basically what he says in response to everything. Time's running out. If the, if Sawtooth Jack gets to the church by midnight, it's toast. There's going to be at least nine years of dust. Uh, yeah, so the the bully tells Officer Ricks about Sawtooth's re- whereabouts after he chases off Richie's dad. Uh, and then they end up going to the church. He's like, get in the car. Looks like you won this year. I think it's time for all that, right? Mm-hmm. The dad's in the church when Richie gets there. And there's this whole scene. Say his fucking name. Sawtooth Jack? No, no, no. say his name. Uh, Big Baby B? Beetle, no. Beetlejuice? I wish we didn't have so many nicknames. Beetlejuice? <laughs> no, not one more time. And the dad gives this speech like, look, man, it sucks. Yeah, that's your brother. But look, this was a sacrifice we had to make. They would have killed us all. We're good now. We're good. We're good. We got a model home. Mom's dead. What? Uh, <laughs> and I, I love this part because <laughs> Richie leans in and he goes, you disgust me. <laughs> Anytime someone says that in movies, I always laugh. You just you dying to say that in real life. You disgust me. You just pull that out at work one day. I'm going to. Steve, I'm going to go to take five. You got this? You, you disgust me. <laughs> you have to say it like yeah. that. Yeah. Let your voice crack a little bit. Uh, and then the bully starts shooting. I called it Pumpkin Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that threw me off. Mom, can we get Sawtooth Jack? We have Sawtooth Jack at home. <laughs> it's pumpkin. It's pumpkin Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. And then anyway, he, the bully shoots Jim twice. And like, there's this cool scene where Richie's like trying to save this fucking monster. Trying to take get him, him into, into the, the church. church. But at the same time, it's, it's his brother, you know? And then finally he pulls a gun on the bully who totally bitches out. And uh, Jim's like, just shoot me, bro. He's like, you know how fucking terrible it is to walk around full of candy with a pumpkin head murdering people wearing this stupid fucking belt uh, buckle. That's the only thing they let me wear. <laughs> I don't know why. I had why, a cool letter jacket. Why Couldn't is I my shirt that? off? I don't, yeah. I don't like it. It's kind of weird if you think about it, Richie. <laughs> yeah, so he shoots his own face. with, And then Ricky's the winner. Richie's the winner now. Richie's the winner. Richie's the winner. <laughs> a lot of our citizens are dead. Yay. Who's cleaning this up if we're all dancing? The graduating class has been halved. <laughs> and then uh, there's the midnight dance. He tells Kelly to pack her shit. They're going to run away. Richie ends up taking off in his brand new Corvette. Uh, we get the whole scene with the dad again, trying to stand up to Rick's. Boo fucking who, Dan? <laughs> it's funny. You grab your balls now. Punches him out. Uh, he ends up picking up Kelly, taking him down the road. Rick ends up trying to pull him over and there's a whole scene where he takes him out into the cornfield. And I guess he kind of needs to put him like mostly alive into the grave. I don't know. And, and the whole time, like I was expecting, you know, Oh, Kelly's going to show up from behind and yeah. knock out. She the just farm. literally, she sat in literally the car. just sat in the you car. Know, the whole most time. movies they don't do what they're told. Like, no, yeah. she's like, he told me to stay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucked. He died. Mm. Mm. At least I got a car. It reminded me of that scene from uh, Step Brothers where it's like, what are you doing? I'm burying you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up killing Ricks. How did he get that gun? Did he like take it out of his belt? Uh, Kelly gave it to him at the the, the dance. Oh. She smuggled it in when they were dancing. She snuck it into his hand or something. Nice. And then I did like this, how they, they key us. And the whole, like, the, there's like a record scratch, and the, <laughs> and you can like see everyone in the party, like, <gasps> PDA between yeah. two outsiders. Yeah. <gasps> Racists. Racists. Right. And then uh, he kills Ricks, but then the fucking farm guy knocks Richie into the grave with a shovel and then goes down there and I'm burying you, beats him to death with it, I guess. Uh, yeah, my note is Kelly, what have you been doing this whole goddamn time? All in caps. Cuts back to the car. She's got the radio on. Mother. 
<laughs> some dancing? Yeah, he's in Misfits. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's still thematic. Oh, another walk away. Ooh, what they say, what they do. What up? And then Kelly drives away. Fucking Dan shows up. He's the Ted of this universe. <laughs> Kelly, what they do? And she drives away. Uh, and then Dad. She hits him with a fuck you, fuck this town, and she rolls. Yeah, fuck the rules. And why does everybody keep saying that in this town? There are no stop signs on the black road. <laughs> <laughs> And then, what does that mean? I guess a year later, dad goes and cuts Richie down. Uh, yeah, he kills the farmer. Stabs the farmer and they're going to go burn it all down together. Burn it all down. Burn it all down. You, with your flame powers. If I wasn't, if that wasn't clear, yeah. you have those now. <laughs> I know this is all new to you. You don't use them a lot in battle. Inadvisable tactic, but I suggest you use it. Yeah. I really hope for Richie's sake that as the new Sawtooth Jack, they filled him up with jujubes because mm. he, he, uh, he liked those. He wanted those at the movie theater and they were out. It's true. Mm -hmm. Raisinets would just like melt. Yeah. <laughs> and then people are like, there's raisins in here. You shit your pants? There's <laughs> raisins in here. <laughs> it's like one of those shitty Halloween, like there's toothpaste and stuff in there when they open him up. It's whatever that shit is that's always like put in the orange and black wrapping you know what I'm talking about? Or they call like Mary Janes or something like that. Tell me about the little caramel treats. Sure. They're like individual. Some of them are black. Some of them are orange. Yeah. Those are awesome. No, those things suck. You don't like caramel? I like caramel, but not those. People don't like you anymore, Steve. Yeah, I bet. there's literally a whole like the food historian, the history behind the gross black and orange Halloween taffy. Like it is a thing. I like taffy. I like taffy too, but apparently not, Steve. Not those. Not those. Not those. Come, at, come at me. Come at me in the comments. Apparently, I I'm the outlier. I said. I said what I said. I'm sure there's someone out there who's like, mm, I mean, Steve and the man. They're not Mary Janes. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> da, 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 da. But that, my my ladies and germs, is 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 Dark Harvest from yeah. 2023. We hope we did it justice. Didn't love it as much as I hoped to love it. But again, there's a lot to love there. And I like the fact that it's kind of underrated, undersung. Great choice. Blah, I, had, blah. I had a lot of fun. It's fun. It's obviously I would like to not see a, a perfect sequel. movie. I, I would like to see a sequel. Yeah. Again, it's Pumpkin not a perfect Jim movie. Returns. I had a fun time. I could see myself turning this on around Halloween and watching it. You know what I would like to see? I'll, I'll come up with a sequel right now. Got okay. this? You ready? Pumpkin Bill? Pumpkin Jim? <laughs> yes, Pumpkin Jim. Uh, it's like outsiders. Cops. Big name actors. They come to this town after the massacre. Most of it's burnt down. Kelly right? told them. No, no, no. Well, maybe Kelly brought them, but yeah. I, I would say there's a massacre because this time the dad and Richie really raised hell. Oh, okay. So it's after, it's like 20 years later. Maybe we're in the 70s now. This the, town's like cratered, doesn't exist. The town is reestablishing after the dust storm finally settles, right? And then like all, maybe a big developer moved in. So we get like a bigger city and, and then yeah, P Pumpkin Jim returns. <laughs> It's Pumpkin Jim. And then like... No one was alive enough to remember Angela, the Sawtooth Jack name. Maybe it's like 40 years later, 30 years later, like fucking Angela Bassett is Kelly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and they bring okay. her like... And she's like Sarah Connor, like... And she, and she Terminator wins an too. Oscar because she's just a star. Exactly. Yeah. I say, mm -hmm. let's do it. I'd, I'd watch that. Don't go down that road. That's Pumpkin Jim. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they call it the Black Road. It's the... Oh, that's the title of the movie. Yeah. Okay. Just because. There are no stop signs. <laughs> yeah, on the black that's road. in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even the tagline of the movie. It's actually just the title yeah. continued. Yeah. <laughs> that's my idea. You can take it or leave it, but that's all the time we've got for right now. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And we've got to go return some videotapes. Happy streaming. Happy streaming.